Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the edit place. So just yesterday or maybe two days ago as of this posting uh, on my main channel, I posted a video on the Osmo Pocket 2 and school video. You should check it out. Link in the description below. But the intro shot was kind of cool because we spent some time playing around with masking and floating objects. And so I wanted to take a little bit and show you actually how easy it is to do some more creative shots like this. Alrighty, everybody. So we are going to be taking a look at this shot right here from my latest video over on my main channel. You can check it out down in the link below all about the DJI Pocket 2. There we go. Boom. Pretty simple. Um, and yeah, we're going to run through how to do that kind of a floating effect real quick. And it was a lot easier than, uh, you might imagine. So later in the exact same video, we kind of show off in kind of a vlog how we did it. Uh, essentially we simply took the Osmo pocket two and we put it on this little stand right here and basically just raised it. Let's see, where is it? Where is that there? It be, uh, and we did this a bunch of different times. We also had to compensate because for some reason while I was on here, um, it was kind of angled. So I just had to fix that obviously in post and rotate it a bit to make it nice and straight and crop in and so on and so forth. Um, a couple of things to note when you're doing shots like this, you always need a clean plate. So a clean plate is simply just whatever the background is with nothing in front of it, since you are going to be masking and uh, using this as a background, basically. And then it's really just a series of, I'm kind of, you can see my hand there, I'm spinning the light stand, bring it down, and then Christian's hand comes in and uh, grabs it. And so it's just doing that, you know, like a dozen times and waiting for the best result. And I do believe in this clip, the first shot actually ended up being the best. Yep. And so simply you just kind of get the starting position roughly where you want it, set your in and out points. Uh, yep, somewhere around there. And we're going to grab that. I'm going to put that on line two, because again, we're going to grab our cleaned plate and let's see what we're working with here. I'm just gonna go ahead and stretch that clean plate to it for now. And like I said, here's where you can go in and if you have to make any adjustments um, to straighten things out, crop it in, whatever you want. And to make our lives a lot easier with the mask here, you have to be careful with perspective I am not a 3D animator. I cannot paint, redraw, reanimate, whatever. Um, so you want to make sure that you're shooting straight on because you're essentially putting your mask right where the quarter 20 is here. And you'll notice that I didn't screw the Osmo down all of the way. And that gave us this little gap. And so the actual connection point to the Osmo is a lot smaller. And so we're getting a lot of the natural curve right here. On some of the earlier shots, uh, we kind of stopped noticing. It kind of just kept getting screwed in after a while. Let me see if I can find... Yeah, so like right around here, uh, you can see that's fully kind of uh, zoomed in there. Whoop, whoop, uh, e, uh. You can see that uh, while you still have that curve right there, when you mask and feather, you're going to get a lot of that uh, kind of the the actual light stand. Uh, it's going to be really hard to kind of feather it and make it fully disappear. Do what you can while you're shooting it to make your job in post that much easier. So now you can go through and go into your color page. And I guess it doesn't really matter which one you do first. You can color before, you can color after. Uh, I haven't really noticed it change too much, but basically you can um, apply whatever grade you want to both the background and foreground here. Now, when I click on that, you don't see everything. You will have to make some adjustments probably afterwards. You'll see why in a minute. 
But yeah, now we're going to go back to our main clip here where we see the light stand. And again, we're on the color page. And now we're going to go to the mask tool. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom out just a little bit here. And I'm actually going to start it right around there. So I'm going to go to a new node here. Uh, you can I add it to your existing nodes, but it can also make more of a headache. I just like having one big effect kind of per node here. I don't want it to interfere with my exposure stuff at all. So new node here, and then anywhere in this open area, I'm going to right click and hit alpha output. That's gonna add this blue little dot right here, which is going to give this blue little square a friend. And we're gonna connect the two. Be friends. Connect the two, there we go. We got a nice dashed line there. Uh, and so while we're on this node, we are going to hit our pen tool here. And you're gonna make sure you're kind of near where you're going to be start uh, masking here. And then you just wanna create a good old mask. Now obviously your shot could look very different. I recommend adding just enough points to get the job done, but don't overdo it on, especially on a simple shot like this with a million different points, um, primarily up here towards the top. Even honestly, that was probably one too many because as you go and move the mask around, it's going to make uh, life really annoying with keyframing a bunch of different points when you can get the job done with maybe two or three. Now you notice that now it's cropped out the Osmo now that we've finished our mask. Um, and I need to correct that. So we're just gonna hit our good old little invert button. And now we can see our mask is done here. So job well done, good job guys. Um, and now you can definitely see the uh, issue with the grading. So again, if I go back to this other clip here, you'll notice that you can go in and really start to, I am messing with the wrong clip. There we go. Uh, you can go in and spend your time kind of tweaking the lighting and all that stuff. We'll, we'll touch upon that more in a couple minutes here. But for now, let's go back to our main thing and we have our mask can make all necessary adjustments kind of make sure everything is covered up oh fingers down there forgot about that and again i'm just gonna kind of start right here that's where i was starting um, and this is where you can mess around with feathering if you really want to again your softness right here um, just keep in mind that the more you feather, so if I feather it a bunch, while it may look good on the sides, you're going to start seeing what is under your mask the more you feather. So do it uh, gently if you must at all. I think I did it around 0.2 before, and that was okay. And now uh, over here where currently our scopes are, we're going to go to our keyframe panel. And then you can see all your different correctors here. Uh, these correspond to the nodes. And so I'm gonna be on the last node here. So corrector four. And so what I wanna do to activate essentially keyframing is right next to the proper corrector, I'm gonna hit this little guy and this is going to automatically add a new keyframe every time I adjust or move this mask. So now I'm gonna simply start clicking my right key on my keyboard, which is going to advance to frame, and I'm going to move this down. And guess what? I'm going to hit my right key again, and I'm going to move this down. And again. Now a shot like this is so simple, like I said, because this pole is moving straight down, so I'm not really needing to make any new adjustments. Your clip could be way more complex than this if you have things coming in and out. You need to constantly adjust all these uh, different parameters and yeah and sometimes you also don't need to go frame by frame you can go one two three four five and move it down here and then a handful more move it keep going and you'll notice every time i move it here it is adding keyframes uh down here to the side and like i said you can do a bunch you can also do a rough uh, especially if you're just trying to see 
like the proof of concept, uh, you can literally go like crazy with it and just do like l big gaps in between all the keyframes. Just kind of getting it roughly in there. And I think this is near the final spot. And so boom. So we did something like this for our rough. And now if I go back to the beginning, uh, click away so I don't see that. Boom. So you can see that you can definitely still uh, see part of this here, right? And so this is where you'd go back and go back to wherever you want it to start. And you kind of just clean it up. And by me by that, make sure the auto keyframing is still turned on. And now you can just go into all the little bits and be like, ooh, I moved this one too far. Oh, that's not far enough, so I need to readjust it. And this is definitely where things can get messy again with too many keyframes because you don't want to like change your mind on things. You just want to correct any mistakes because if you start changing your mind and pulling the mask in different directions, um, it's going to start going kind of crazy. And yeah, so you would just clean that up. Um, I'm not going to spend a terrible amount of time on it right now. You guys get the point. Uh, again, this was... You saw how I did this in real time. That literally took like a minute. And um, so, yeah, for proof of concept stage, we're like, okay, this looks pretty good. Definitely with some, that's my dog wagging his tail in the background, super loud. Uh, you know, this definitely with some more uh, time spent is going to be, um, you know, come out real clean. And again, you can still see the mask right here. And so this is where you would go in and again, click on either your background or foreground. You can adjust whichever works out best. And you kind of just go in and start playing around with everything. In theory, if you shoot with the same exact lighting and the same exact location and everything, they should match without having to do a bunch of uh, crazy exposure changes. Something was casting a weird shadow or, or something happened that was kind of a mistake on our part while shooting. Again, you want to check this stuff as much as possible. Um, again, if you can do test shoots and things like that, import very quickly, it'll make your life a lot easier. Um, but yeah, we can go in and like that's pretty close there. Again, I can spend more time. I can still slightly see the uh, edges just a bit. But in terms of this video, that's kind of the basic concept. And so you can do this if you were hanging a product by wires. You can uh, do it to pretty much mask and track anything. And there you guys have it. Hopefully you got something out of today's video. If you did, definitely hit that like button and subscribe for more content to come. I'm trying to get up to at least around three times a week here. Uh, so definitely ramping up the videos for this channel. Huge thanks to everyone who's gotten it to this point. Again, you can follow my, again, if you're into filmmaking beyond just editing and especially the latest technology, you should go subscribe to my main channel. Of course, all this stuff is down below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.